really excited about this period of time. Not just because, this is so weird, uh, not just because um, it's a way to be together, but actually we think this is going to be a really exciting time because it's going to cause each and every single one of us to start to dig in with Jesus, not because of the lights, not because of the sound, not because of the fanfare, but because of who he is. Uh, and so this first week might feel really weird. That might have felt very strange for some of you. It felt strange for me as well. Uh, and yet there's still a sense, an incredible sense of God's presence in the truth of the words that you are even thinking, that you're singing. Uh, I just want to encourage you, as Simon said, we're going to take a longer time at the end to do more of that. Uh, me and Millie will be uh, singing some songs, um, leading us in worship, but we just want you guys to feel free to worship Jesus, whether that's kneeling, standing, sitting, uh, raising your hands. You know, we don't want this. This isn't, we are restricted by the government, but not by the Holy Spirit, okay? So uh, the Holy Spirit still moves. It will look different to how maybe it did before, but we just want to encourage you that we are able to worship. We are able to do those things um, uh, within, within uh, sort of a sensible uh, sort of way. Uh, but uh, it's weird. Uh, speaking and standing here today because I've only done this once in the last five months. It used to be an absolute staple of my diet. I used to just be getting ready for Sunday, love preparing the sermon. Um, I've realised that even if I spit, it's fine because they're my household, so I can't do in there. I, I just let my mouth go, it's fine. Uh, not perfectly, by the way. So you're going, why would you spit? Um, uh, and um, yeah, it, I, I miss doing this, and yet I, I have this sense of nervousness but excitement for what I'm going to bring today because. Um, and this isn't an attack, this isn't a slander on any other church, but I see a lot of stuff going on about meeting together. There's so much focus on us being back together. It's like, yes, we get to see each other, I get to see you and see you in the eyes and talk to you and, and, and get a sense of community. But today, my, my message, if you see the PowerPoint up uh, behind the ant, um, is meeting God. Because as wonderful as it is that we can come together and I can see you and we can meet together to meet as a part and do all that good government stuff that they put in place, today is about meeting with God. That is what this is. This is what this building represents. It represents the church, which we know the Bible tells us is the people of God who make up a, a people that represent and are the image of God and reflect Him and worship Him. That's what the church is about. That's what this building represents. That's what the gathering of us together means. Not, hey, I haven't seen you in so long. And that's fantastic, can I say. I'm so thrilled I get to say congratulations in the flesh to you guys. And I have to type it through Messenger. I'm so great I get to see the people that I haven't seen in so long and look them in the eyes. Thank you. Um, my lovely daughter trying. She likes just randomly biting the, the toes of my shoes. So I don't find that weird. Uh, and, but but it's as great as that is, today is about meeting with God and I just want to keep our focus on the main thing. And I was thinking about what I wanted to preach on and I was like, okay, God, you know, gathering together in Hebrews, don't forget gathering together, you know, all about the body working together. And it's like, what, what about meeting with me? What about meeting with me? What about the encouragement that every single person here today, and if you're watching this at 5 p.m. tonight when it goes out live, it's the same for you. God wants to meet with you. And you are able to meet with him behind a mask, socially distanced. You are able to meet with him. Why? Because he is desperate. In fact, the Bible is a thousand page long book about how God wants to meet with you. That's what the Bible's about. That's the big story of the Bible. And so I just wanted to focus us in today on the idea that God wants to meet with us. And we can easily come. We can put this service on again and again. You can sign up online and we can put stuff out and you can come and you can sit and you can listen and you can go away. And that's fine. It's still, it's still be lovely to see that. But that would suck if after four months of doing this, you came away and said, man, I've attended so many church services. That's correct. I, I don't want you to attend church services. I want you to meet with the living God. That's what we're here to do. And so when I was preparing this, I felt God challenged me about some of the different ways that we connect with God. And I think sometimes we miss out because we fall so much into one particular way that we meet with God. I'll give you an example. Has anyone ever met someone you didn't quite know how to address? You didn't quite know how to address? Maybe your first day. Do you go in call? 
But you go in like polite and gentlemanly. And then I love to make everybody some flowers. How, how do you go? I say, how do you how do you address someone? I think for an entire night I just sort of offended me, and she seemed to like that. So that worked. <laughs> she just laughed, and, and, and you know, five years later we're married. Actually, two years later, I wasn't that slow, was I? Uh, I was desperate. Uh, and uh, may, maybe it's a job interview. How how, how sort of chill do you go in? Do you go in really, you know, suit and tie, or is it based on the job? How do I address this person? What do I do? The first time you meet an in-law, do I call you sir? Do I call you Martin? This is what I had to do with Nia's dad. Do, what do, I, do I bow? How far do I go with this? Do you know, how do I show you I, that I respect you and, and, and I want the best for you? Now, I, I was going to find a photo, in fact, I found it yesterday, but it's not in the PowerPoint, but when I was 16, our PE department had this big celebration uh, day, a big sort of award ceremony, and I got, I'm going to show it, I got student of the year. Uh, and uh, because I'm just a legend, apparently. And uh, apparently, one of my PE teachers was a former football player, and he got a guy called Dion Dublin in to come and do the award show. Now, you, some of you may have no idea who Dion Dublin is, but he's a former Aston Villa England striker. But like, just well, in fact, you probably know him from Homes under the, under the Hammer. You watch Homes under the Hammer. I think is he on that? He's, a, he's into like home. Was it? It's one of the home, home redevelopment things. TV. But basically, there was this guy coming in who was this celebrity, and I'm 16, I'm a huge football fan, I'm a bit of fan, and so there's this guy coming in, and I'm like, okay, I'm about to win an award, I want the guy to like me, but I want him to think I'm cool, I want to be mates, but I still want him to think I'm a fan. And so I didn't quite know how to address this guy, Dion Duck, sir, Matt, what do I call you because you're so, you're important to me. And I think I probably made a fool of myself and didn't say anything, just sort of, and then, and then left and didn't really say anything else. I, I came off London there, I'm sure. But, but, but sometimes we have that in life, right? And, and, I, and I want to suggest that we have that with God. And, and this, I'm going I'm to come up with a list in the table, and it's not going to be exhaustive. These aren't these, the four main things that God's, you know, the four only things that God comes as. But I think there are ways that God represents himself, and these four, I think, are the main four that we can address God. But I think sometimes we don't, take them in, and we don't actually address God as who he is, and we miss out on a deeper relationship with our loving king. And so I want to go through them. So if you go to the first slide, you're going to see the four uh, titles of God, and it's important to say, God doesn't, he's not separate, he's not loads of literal different things, but he will represent himself in different ways to us at different times, and I think we should come before him at different times. The Holy Spirit will convict us of different ways, but I want to show you a couple of different more things I go through. And each each title will come with a few statements. What will be I am? In fact, yeah, let me get it up. Oh, can I come and pull you along there for that time? I'm going to pull this up the way so everyone can see. So the first one is I am. So based on who God is, it, it says something about who I am. Next one. The next one says something I'm not. The next one, something that I receive from this person. Next one. The way I approach this person, next one, the way I respond to them, final one, and the posture I have. Now all will become more clear, but I want to give you an example. Her Majesty the Queen, the big dog of Britain, as I like to call her. <laughs> never said that before, there we go. The big dog of Britain. To us, she is your majesty. She is man. I'm getting to the point. She is man. To her husband. She, she may be Elizabeth. Is it Elizabeth? Yeah. She may be Elizabeth. <laughs> to, to, to Charles, at some point, she would have been mum. To Harry and William, she would have been grandma or granny. To, to, to their kids, she's, great, she's a great granny. And so each of these people would address her and come to her differently. We've got a woman in the room who stood before the Queen. Libby. Sure. MBE over there, Libby Jones in the corner. <laughs> has stood before the Queen. And so all of a sudden these different people relate to this one person, the same person, but relate to them in a different way. And so we're going to look at how our Christian life does this. So the first one we're going to go to is Saviour. So Jesus, God, is a Saviour to us. So when I come before God as my Saviour, what does it mean I am? It means I'm a sinner. Why? Because only a sinner needs a saviour. If I was fine, I preached about this a couple of weeks ago, then, then if I was fine, I wouldn't need a saviour. But Jesus being my saviour means I need to recognise and accept my sinfulness. But what 
in that process does Jesus say, I am not? He says, you're not despised. I don't hate you. I'm not asking you to condemn yourself or hate yourself, but recognize the sinfulness within you. So Jesus says, you're a sinner because I'm going to save you, but you're not despised. I love you. That's why I came to save you. So what do we receive then from the Savior? We say we receive salvation and freedom. Freedom from addiction, freedom from a past life, freedom from the old version of us. Jesus says we, we, when, when we are baptized, we die and we are raised to life again. That's why we're called born again Christians. Because you're born again into a new life with Jesus empowered by the Holy Spirit. So then how do I approach my Savior? With humility. Because I have nothing to offer this Savior. I have nothing. The Bible tells me I cannot earn it. I don't deserve it. I just come before my Savior who gave a gift free through his son, Jesus. So then how do we respond to the Savior? We give thanks. Jesus, you did so much for me. Jesus, you've done so much for me. In all my brokenness, you still chose me. You still loved me. You still forgave me. The Bible tells us that whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's enough. If that is the only thing you take from here today, that is enough for you to go and singing his praises. Because whilst you were still a sinner, whilst he still saw the dirt and sin inside every single one of us, he said, I came, I saved you. So we give thanks. And so what's finding our posture? It's arms open for submission. Now this is, I'm not telling you every time you say thanks to God, you come like this. But it's a posture of the heart which ever so often make a man a posture of the body. Make a man just arms open saying, God, God, you gave it all. When you opened your arms on the cross and were nailed there and died for my sins, so too I open my arms to you and I submit. And I say thank you and I give my life to you. And many of you might go, great, Sam, I love Jesus. Savior. I'm great at this one. Fantastic. But there's more to come, and I think we need to recognize as we come to the time at the end where we're going to spend time with Jesus, I want us to maybe focus on one column. Focus on one column where you think, man, I haven't recognized and spent time with God or, 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 or gone through this table. And again, I, I don't want this to be a formula. It's not a formula. Sometimes it's just helpful to recognize God's me. I'm not going to do that. Um, okay, so the next one is Lord. Jesus, my Lord. So what does it mean that I am Jesus, my Lord? It means I'm a servant. It means I'm a servant. It means I come to serve him. Lord or master, and I'm your servant. So I come, bowed knee, saying, God, oh, well, well, whatever you would have me do, I, okay, I will be obedient. What does it mean I'm not? I'm not in control. It means I'm not in control of my life. It means I'm not in control of what's going to happen. It means I'm not in control of every single choice I'm going to make. Why? Because if the God is my Lord, if I'm his servant, then in every moment I should be going, Jesus, what do you want from me? What do you want for the people around me? What do you want for my wife? What do you want for my child who's distracting everyone right now? Who do you want for, for the things that I'm moving into? What do you want for my future? Why? Because when God is your Lord, I'm your servant. That's why I'm no longer in control. So then what do we receive from the Lord? Purpose and meaning. Being a servant means your master gives you meaning, your purpose, your task, the reason you're around. He gives you what you are called for. And so when I come before the Lord, I go, well, well, you're my Lord, I'm your servant. But therefore, if you've got me for something, you've put something inside me. You've equipped me for the thing that you've called me for. Whether it's standing on the door welcoming people on a Sunday, whether it's being a doctor in a hospital, whether it's starting charities, whether it's being a binman, whether it's being whatever, you call me for this and I'm going to serve you and I'm going to be obedient to you. Whether it's being a, a, a father or a husband or a wife or a mother, I'm going to be obedient to what you're saying and telling me to do. So then how do we approach the Lord? With fear and awe. Now fear is not terrified fear. Fear of the Lord, the Bible talks about. Through the Lord is actually the beginning of wisdom, the Bible tells us. And it's this absolute reverence for who God is, for his might, for his greatness, for the fact that he is just so massive, my brain can't take it, and I'm just nothing but a speck, a speck of sand before him, truly. And so I come in absolute awe and fear of the Lord when we approach the Lord. I imagine when you stood before the Queen of you, you didn't walk up there and train us, say, hey, I, get that medal, I imagine there was some fear, there was some awe because of the, the, the position, the title, the authority that that person had. And it's exactly the same when we come to meet the king. And what I'd like to suggest is sometimes I don't see it so much in my own life and I don't see it so much in the church. 
I don't see us so in awe of who God is that we can't with bended knee. We stroll in on a Sunday, we sing a few songs, we maybe raise our hand, we maybe throw a few coins in the bucket, we go home. Why? Because how magic. The Lord Jesus is just my saviour. God's just my saviour, so I just give thanks, that's great. But what if he's our Lord? Wouldn't we come with bended knee? Wouldn't you come understanding the authority of who he is? So that's the Lord. So then how do we respond to the Lord? We worship. You worship. You just say, God, I'm not worthy of you. I'll worship you for who you are. I sing your praises. Our Father who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed be your name. The start of the Lord's prayer is worship to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So we worship and our posture, you can imagine, is bow down, bend the knee. Taking a low place before God, less of me and more of you, God. That's how we approach our Lord. So sweeping on, I don't want to take too long with each because I want to get actually to some space where we just meet with him. <laughs> because me talking and meeting him, I know we did that. Um, so Father, the third one is Father. So what does it mean if I am? It means I'm a child. It means I'm a child. It means I've got a name. It means he's chosen me. <clears throat> Because the second one, I'm not, I'm not an orphan. He's adopted me. You're not on your own, you're not out in the cold. When you become a Christian, you, 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 yes, you receive Jesus, but you also are invited in, you are adopted. God gives you his name. I love the, the, the thought in the biblical text when Paul writes about adoption. Adoption in Roman times wasn't to a child. Romans didn't adopt a baby. They would wait to see what the child would turn out like and would adopt them from 18 onwards. One of the Roman emperors was adopted at the age of 40. Because he said, I don't like my child, but this 40 year old I know will leave my thing, so he adopted him. So Paul is saying, he sees you. He sees who you are. He sees who you are and he says, do you know what, even in the mess that I see before me, I still choose to adopt you. He hasn't adopted you thinking, well I hope it turned out okay. He sees you, he knows you, and he still says, you're my child. Come and be a part of my family. Come and have my name. Come and receive uh, my, what's the word? Right, when you die, forgive me. Inheritance, thank you, Sam, well done. Um, come and receive the inheritance I have for you. That's day for you. Uh, so that's what he says, you're a child, you're not an orphan. So what do you receive when you're a father? An identity. This is who you are. This is who you are. You represent the identity. The football season's just started back, and how do you know a football player by their identity, the badge they wear on their shirt? It represents who they are. The best teams are a team who have a culture. Many of you know Alex, Mr. Alex Ferguson, when he led Manchester United, they had a culture. People knew who they were, they knew how they were going to play. Why? Because they played for the badge. Guess what you've got a badge? It says, Child of God. And there's a way we live, and there's a culture we live by. That represents Jesus. Why? Because he's our father and we're part of a big team. Now we're part of a family. So how do we approach father? With ease. With comfort. With love. Now you might not have had a fantastic earthly father. Maybe you have. <laughs> but God is so above so bigger, so greater than any earthly example you could ever have. He is a father and he wants his child just to run to him. The famous story in the Bible of the prodigal son and the father, the son rejects the father, he does everything to make the father, anything that could have made the father hate him and yet the father comes back and seeing him from a distance, the father runs to him. That child is you and me running to Jesus and he runs to us as our father. So we come to him with comfort and ease, not with pressure. Man, how many people sometimes feel the pressure of Christianity? In your social media, in your life. I've got to do this, I've got to read my Bible this many times, I can't say those words. Oh man, my, my colleagues need to know this. But I mean, sometimes we can make Christianity so heavy and hard and pressured. But God's like, I'm just a father who wants to bless his kids first and foremost. Can I be really honest with you? Uh, this week I was journaling. Um, uh, and uh, I wrote I wrote a title because I'm pretentious. I think title's a journal entry. Anyway, and I said, but I feel dry. I feel dry. God, I 
feel like I can't connect to you. I've never been more in love with your Bible. But I've never felt so far from your spirit. I said, I've got so much pressure. I've got all this stuff going on. Risk assessments, and blah, 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 the church. I've got so much practical things I've got to be doing. And Joe said to me, he said, I'm your son before you're really born. You're my son more than anything else. He said, even before public power, before anything else like that, you're my son. And I met with Jesus there and he said, you're my son. Why? Because all of a sudden I was able to come to him with comfort and ease, not under the pressure. I came to make comfort. So, how do we respond? So, that's uh, With requests. The Bible says if, if, if a child, you know, if one is going to clothe the birds of the sky and the, 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 the flowers of the ground, won't he do so much more for you if you ask him? He says, would a, would a loving father, if their child asks for some bread, give them a rock? No, he gives them so much more. Your loving father wants to pour out your requests, and when we go to him, we can ask him. We can say, Jesus, would you, would you heal this person? God, would you, would you provide for me financially? Would you look after me? Would you protect my family? Would you do this, this, and this? Why? Because he's a father who wants to give good gifts to his kids. And sometimes he might say no, sometimes he might say maybe. But I promise you, what he says to you will be what is best for you. So finally, the posture we come is an embrace, is a coach. It's a coach, man. He just wants to embrace you. And in this flipping socially distance world, I need an embrace. You know, we just want a hug. Don't you want an embrace? The Holy Spirit's ready and willing to give it to you. Why? Because God is a father. God is a father to you. So final one, guys. God is a friend. So what does it mean that I am as well as my friend? It means I'm a friend. It means I'm a friend. He's my friend. I get to be with him. What does it mean I'm not? It means I'm not alone. Anything you go through, you are not alone. If you're sick, sat here today, and you're on, in, in a single person, you're not alone. You're not alone when you have Jesus. Why? Because he is present with us always by his Holy Spirit. You're never on your own with Jesus. When social media posts doesn't get as many likes as you want, when there's that sense of emptiness because you haven't got that thing that you thought you'd get from whatever it is. The Holy Spirit is there. Let me uh, show you one more uh, picture that I've, I've journaled about. God spoke to me many years ago. Uh, and I was single at the time and I said to Jesus, I'd love a girlfriend. Uh, please. Uh, and, uh, um, and I was just going through, I had a spirit of rejection in my life. I felt rejected by girls a lot in my life. And people and friendship groups and that stuff. And I just remember God showed me his image. It was actually the image from uh, oh, The Hobbit. Weird. Uh, and it was because I like films and stuff. And I just saw this camera pan, and it's just Bilbo sat in front of a fire in a rocking chair. But it was me sat in the rocking chair. There was an empty chair, and there was a fire, and I was just talking. And he said, I will always be with you, whether you become an old man. Let your relationship with me be the closest relationship you ever have. Would you let go of the dream of a wife to accept the, 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 the reality of relationship with me for the rest of your life? I said, okay. And I broke down. And the next week, I went to a party and I met Ian. And he blessed me. Why? Because I'm willing to let go of this dream, this thing that I held on so tight. I said, God, if you will be my friend for the rest of my life, that's enough for me. Now, when we meet Jesus like that, that's a powerful moment. Why? Because we realize we're never alone. So what do we receive? We receive support. It says the Holy Spirit is here to teach us the thing that Jesus told us and to teach us new things. That's what the Bible tells us. The Holy Spirit alive in us is here to get you through your hard times. It's there to celebrate with you. Enjoy. When we haven't been able to meet together, I hope and pray that the Holy Spirit has been close to you or you've allowed him because I promise you you've been close to him. I pray that you've acknowledged him and been close to him. Why? Because he has been with you. Whether I was sat, stood on the altar about to marry Leah, whether I was sat next to one of my family members dying, whether I have been on a golf course, whether whatever I have been doing, the Holy Spirit has been with me. When I look at my bank balance at the end of a fucking month and I panic, the Holy Spirit is with me. And He is with you to support and in care and encourage you. But we've got to acknowledge Him. When we meet with God like we do in a few moments' time, Will you acknowledge the Holy Spirit that is there with you, supporting you? Faithful? So then how do we approach a friend? With joy. Oh, I love them too, there we are. Two of the first one. 
we would join them. You come with a friend and you say, hey, 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 we're back. Hello, hi, we're friends. Hey, man, should we go, yeah, barbecue and, and Xbox and golf and football and, yes. That's what a relationship with a friend is. If you have a friend and it's not like that, either don't be friends with them or try something new. <laughs> you have to go in and you feel down in the dumps because you meet with a friend, goodness me. It's not a friend, it's a friend is someone you can be honest with and open with and share things with and say, hey, do you want to come and do this? Let's have joint things and Simon might be a Cardiff fan and I might be a Villa fan, but man, I love him, he's my friend and I can tell him things and he can tell me and he can encourage me and he can challenge me. Because he's my friend and it's the same with our Holy so we respond with openness. Why? Because to be a friend, you need to be open. I, I can't be a friend to Simon if all he knows is my name and my age. And I don't tell him I'm, how you good. There's a rule in drama when I used to do imp improvisation and stuff. You always say yes. Always say yes. Why? Because this is quite a difficult scene. Hey man, should we go and uh, do some boxing? No. Okay, no worries. Uh, do you want to try singing? No. And you get people like that in drama class, they're telling you to friggin' pay. And the rule is always say yes, and the rule with the Holy Spirit for me is always say yes. Open up, tell him how you feel. When I wrote in my journal entry, I was opening up to the Holy Spirit saying, God, I know you're good, but I don't feel you. I haven't felt you in a long time. I haven't felt that buzz of your spirit. I've never been more in love with your word, but man, I haven't felt the touch of your heart. Because I was being open with him. Go read the Psalms if you think I'm making this up, man. David's freaking bipolar. The man is up and down and up and down. Why? Because he is journeying as a friend with the Holy Spirit. He said, man, this is where I am. Can I be honest with you? So that's how we approach a friend. And finally, our posture with a friend is you walk side by side. You walk side by side with this person. Even though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear because you are with me. You are with me. Man. God's good. God is good, man. And he wants to meet with you and he wants to love you. But I want to challenge you. Look at this. Look at this table. Forget about me. Uh, look at that table. What are you great? How are you great at connecting with Jesus? How are you great at connecting with God? Do you, do you always see him as your saviour? Are you always saying, God, I'm a sinner and, and no one decides you love me and I want freedom? But he's never your friend. You never just talk to him. You never just journey with him. Maybe he's, he's always your father. Man, I love you, God. You're my father. You give me an identity. But he's never your Lord. Have you never bowed before God in awe and fear of him? Have you never understood who he is like you're his servant? Because if we're living in one or two or even three of these camps, and remember I said this isn't exhaustive, there's more. God, there's so much more than this. But these are some of the men that I can think of that God put my heart to share with you. If we're missing out on any of these, then we're missing out on the depth and fullness of relationship with God. And what hurts me is there might be someone, there might be someone here today who's struggling with sin, and you're struggling with things and you say, well, I think that like, God's my Lord and so I'm just so in awe and I'm so in fear of you. And he's like, yeah, but I'm your father too. And I love you. Don't be despised. Don't feel like you're falling into condemnation or, or maybe you need to know he's your saviour today. Maybe you've come in here with guilt and shame and you don't have to shake it. And you know he loves you. You know he's for you, but you, you've forgotten he saved you. You see, God is so big. He doesn't, and as I said, these aren't separate things. He doesn't come in separate columns. But these are patterns we can find in who he is and how he represents himself to his people. Yeah. So we're going to invite Millie back up now. Um, I'm going to get this stuff set up because we're going to spend some time now. Again, um, I just want to make clear, you can stand and watch it with your hand. If you don't have to, we'll sit. If you want to sit, you can. But I'm going to encourage you now to meet with God. I'm going to ask you to be maybe more specific than you would be, and I'm going to ask you maybe to just journey down this thing. Pick a representative of God. Pick a way that God represents himself to us, and just go down the table and declare the things over you. Say, man, if you need to know that God's your Lord today, then you say, God, I'm your servant. I'm your servant today. Maybe you'll want to do the posture. Maybe you'll want to bow. Maybe you want to just say to him, God, where I've tried to take control of my life, would you get rid of that? Because I'm your servant. You're my Lord. Holy Spirit, would you, would you give me a sense of awe and fear of who you are?
That's what we're going to ask us to do today because we want us to connect with God. We're going to, we're going to meet each other outside at the end. We're going to be able to chat, social distance, we love them. But right now, let's meet with God. Let's not come to a building and talk to people and go home. There's no point. I'll show you. Because this is about Jesus. So let's stand. We really got to know about Let's all just stand. It's just an act of we've been sat down for a while. Um, it's good. Get the legs stretched. Feel alive again. Connect with where we are, what we're doing. Uh, and I'm just going to uh, pray up. Really, I'll jump and join you. Um, Father, you want to meet with us. You want to meet with us. And God, we can present any image of ourselves to other people, but you see our hearts. You know where we're failing. You know where we're doing great. You know where we need help. You know how we see you. And so, Father, in this space, I pray that we meet Get rid of destruction. Get rid of the things that are on our hearts and on our minds. God, let us meet with you. Holy Spirit, I just say come. I just say come. Fill this place with your presence. You are alive in us, but God, fill us up to overflowing. Fill this building. Let it pour out onto the streets of Let the